Terry was always sort of the moderator or the, the person that sort of balanced uh, our decision making because he would not say anything for quite a while and, and Tony and I would put together our different opinions about something. Uh, oftentimes Larry and I would maybe be on the same page and Terry would be very quiet until he would say something that would make us realize uh, we were on the wrong side of the equation and <laughs> Terry was looking at it out of the box more, more uh, realistically and, and uh, rationally. He was an incredibly smart guy, an incredibly hard-working guy. And I think we all kind of carried this passion for architecture. This is what we believed in, and this is what we were going to fight for. And I kind of took that from him. So he was just absolutely tenacious uh, towards the quality of a good idea. You know, Terry was going to be damned if he was going to let a good idea be ruined by some sort of mediocrity. Terry was honest. He was brutally honest. We as architects need to sit down and be honest with ourselves about the things we draw. I always liked how he challenged the engineers. Terry had a vision about how the building was gonna go and whenever one of the engineers, whether it was mechanical or structural, challenged him and said, I don't think you can do that, um, he would say, oh yes you can. <laughs> and my first question, to him was, what are the dimensions of an eight inch block, concrete block? And I think that was the first time I heard him say, you're killing me. <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> In the words of Terry Sargent. <laughs> One of the things that really sticks to my mind, his uh, speech about the Drawing Reduction Act. You would get so upset when people would create drawings that were unnecessary <laughs> to build the project. You know, Terry sort of used this term, the science of muddling through, and uh, you know, it's just sort of this dealing with all of the problems simultaneously and all of those challenges. So, it's not a straight path to a full-blown design sprung from the head of Zeus. I would absolutely pick the the Georgia Tech. Manufacturing Research Center as being one of the most emblematic projects of, of, of Terry's work. It was a pretty iconic building in a number of ways. And that building bowed to the past, certainly was of the present, and, and spoke to the, to the future. So there's a, frankly, a timelessness to that and, and so many of his projects. The work was not stylistic. It was responsive to its time, place, and context and the materials that were available. You know, the Delta Airlines in Salt Lake City, perfect example. Trinity School, another great example. Georgia Tech, you know, the palette of materials was brick, you know, and glass. What I learned to ISR was to listen to everyone equally. No matter if you're the president of the university or just a staff member of the school, if you had an opinion, he wanted to listen to it. He was very patient. He would sit and he would listen, I'm sure, there were many days that he would go home and scratch his head, but he was patient enough to let me explore solutions, and I think that that was a big part of how I learned. For me, Terry was always about clarity. There was always an idea that started at the beginning of the project and ran all the way through, and there was a, um, a real emphasis on integrity of materials and integrity on how the building actually functioned. I actually came to this firm because of the design work Terry did. I mean, it was something that, you know, was really a, a major emphasis for me. It was to work for a firm that was, design was a major part of it. I got a chance to visit his second house uh, under construction. He was giving me a tour and you could see where the kitchen space was going to be. Um, he had actually uh, left a big hole in what seemed to be the area of the living room. Uh, and it was just dirt. <laughs> and I walked in there and I'm like, Terry, you know, what, what, what is this? And he goes, Joe, that's where the tree goes. The very first project I worked on was a zoo art. A really uh, fun project for a, a brand new architect. So that was Terry's concept was for this kind of coiled, coiled snake. And, and part of that also was because um, at the time, um, the program inside the building, was there was a chance it might be reptiles in the building um, or, or other animals and so, so Terry was very interested in symbology. As we, as we modeled it, Terry would always um, basically come in with his role of 
of yellow trash. He would um, sit down and explain everything to me and then he'd go away and then he'd come back and check every hour or two and see how far along I was. And then he would say, all right, meet me after dinner. Um, so at, at 7 p.m. I would be back at the, at the computer and he'd come in and he'd sit with me till midnight. And then, you know, we'd go away and then I'd come in the next morning and he'd have a whole new round of trash paper with a whole bunch more stuff. So he'd been working, you know, even after we all left. I saw the Zoo Ark project and thought, mm -hmm. wow, that's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? And then, you know, came to find out it was Lord X Sergeant and, and Terry. So that was actually instrumental in what sort of brought me to the, to the firm in the first place. The first real project that I had the opportunity to work with Terry on was the Twin Creeks Science and Education Building, a project for the National Park Service in Smoky Mountain National Park. I mean, he created what was a really spectacular mountain cabin-like 20,000 square foot teaching and research building. So he was able to sort of take what they wanted, even though it seemed crazy, and, and turn it into a really unique design. On the Georgia Public Health Lab, uh, one of the key ideas was to translate this sort of open framework for testing into really a daylight filled lab that made a great place for the workers involved. So after we created this sort of long linear plan that has all of those things that Terry is interested in, the repetition of the module, the ability to change over time, he created this idea of this clear story that opened up the western facade. It also gave the workers uh, great views out to the west and by creating internal clear story windows we were able to get light almost 60 or 70 feet into the building. When we designed the, the new office space um, it was actually a, kind of a crazy experience um, and I like to think that even though Terry had had actually no hand in the design of the new office space it's very much built upon the design ideas that Terry put forth. We felt it was important that the that the new generation take the design forward. Um, I have to say I worked with a very talented group of, of other designers on the project, but it's very much, um, I think, embodies, again, his, his sort of design uh, sensibilities. It's a certain um, honesty about every, the way everything is put together, I think, is something that he would have uh, very much appreciated. And I think that's really sort of the elegant pragmatist in Terry coming through in the design of our new office space. The, the legacy I would take forward with Terry is really design. I think that that was what he was so focused on. That's what he got up every day to do. He was such a presence, and a presence in his work, that when you look at the projects that he was directly involved with, there's a sensibility that's sort of this, this thread that went, goes all the way through it. And I think that those threads continue through uh, all of our work. Uh, so those are the, uh, the sort of chief legacies of one, solve the client's functional problem. Let's figure out how we meet the budgetary requirements by creating sort of a, a unified, repetitive plan. But then finally, where do we find the delight in the architecture, the beauty, by finding some poetic element, uh, some element that we can make more beautiful than the client ever imagined. And uh, at the end of the day, people are going to remember and love those buildings. Is not to take it too seriously and to just enjoy the day-to-day process that he loved. That's what it is. One of the things he always realized is the building was not for him. It was for the people he was designing it for at the end of the day. And so he wanted it to function and he wanted it to last and be a legacy to um, the institutions that we design things for. And I think that if we could keep that on the forefront, um, I think, you know, the future is bright. I think Terry has laid down the, the gauntlet as a design challenge that we're here as architectural designers. Um, we're not showboat designers. We're, we are pragmatic, um, but we find the elegance in the program, in the site, uh, in the aspirations of the project, and, and our charge is really to sort of put that together in an amazing, elegant way. As part of our merger due diligence, and we did the psychological one about the Myers-Briggs uh, tests and how could I work best with Larry and with Terry. And I remember the, uh, the psychologist was counseling me about Terry and he said, uh, oh, this is going to be a great guy to work with. Uh, you know, he, he'll be very uh, collegial and collaborative and all uh, to a point. And uh, if you push him past that point, He'll kill you. <laughs> of course, he never killed me, and, uh, so I must never have pushed him uh, that far, although I'm sure at times I may have gotten close. But uh, 
he was a, a pleasure and a delight and uh, a, a prince of a guy. And as I, uh, as I said at his uh, memorial a gathering at the, the beer hall in uh, office in, in uh, Ann Arbor, um, he really was an authentic original. Hello, Atlanta. You might be wondering why you're there and I'm here when I was supposed to be there. But in any case, I uh, won this award called the Lifetime Achievement Award. And of course, it was from other architects. But in any case, uh, I figured if uh, I'd worked an entire lifetime, that it was time for a vacation. So without looking at Outlook, I just booked a flight to Hawaii. Aloha.